All right, it, in this video, I'm going to show you a really easy way to, to root plants and start new plants from softwood cuttings or semi-softwood cuttings. Now, on my website, freeplants.com, I've got a, uh, a page on the homemade plant propagation system that shows you building a, a flat and putting screen in there and using a, a fish tank and painting some white stripes on that and so on. And, and that works really good. But today I'm going to show you something that's easier and quicker and just much more simpler to do. So first of all, you're going to start out taking some cuttings. Now, when you, when you take a cutting, this is the big burning bush behind me, you're going to take that cutting anywhere, your cuttings can be anywhere from two to five or six inches long. You're going to make your cutting, I'll step up here, we're going to, this is what the cutting looks like. And now I'm going to strip all those leaves off. And really you can even do that. You don't need but a few leaves at the very top. Depending on the cutting, maybe that you could, this cutting could be like that, or this cutting could actually be that short right there. So the, the length of the cutting really isn't critical. It doesn't make that much difference. What's important is that you take the cutting at the right time of the year. You, um, early spring is not a good time because this new you want to work with new growth. Now this new growth came out this spring. It started growing around mid-April and then by early June this the wood is soft or hard enough that when you stick the cutting it will actually stand up and not weep right over. So that's what you got to be careful of is that you don't take your cuttings too soon. Now as you go into the winter months later into the fall and the winter this wood just continues to get harder. The harder the wood the more difficult it is to root the cutting. So the ideal time in most areas is June, July, August. So again, and it's it's really easy to just take, you know, dozens of cuttings in just seconds on a plant like this. You can see that in that short period of time I, I took all these cuttings. Very, very simple to do. Now I'm going to show you exactly what to do with the cuttings. All right, now in order to, uh, I showed you how we, we took the cuttings off the burning bush. You can do this with all kinds of different flowering shrubs. You can do it with evergreens. So it's, it's really a lot of fun to just experiment and try a lot of different things. Now, <clears throat> to make this simple, I went to Walmart and I picked up, a, a, this is a plastic dish pan, it's about $2. As you can see, I drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom of it. That's really important. You've got to have good drainage. I also found this at Walmart, and this is like a food storage container, and it's already got holes in the side, and that left a little bit of a rig, a, 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 a reservoir here, so I actually drilled four holes in the bottom in the corners so that any water that were to get in this area around the bottom can still get out. Now this is a, you know, an aluminum baking tin. This one does have a wire support. I don't know how well this would hold up when you fill this thing with sand, but it, it doesn't matter if it crinkles up a little bit. It's just going to be harder for you to handle it. So I'm not going to use that one today. I'm going to use this one. Either one of these will work. I've got a lot of my customers, members of our backyard growers group, they buy these things at the dollar store and they fill them. they got dozens and dozens of them that they're using all at the same time. So basically, this is a pretty simple process. I'm going to this is a bag of play box sand. You can pick this up at just about any big box store or hardware store. And I'm going to fill this tub. You want a sand that's a little bit coarse. And this has, this has, there's, there's pebbles in there and they're very easy to see. So you got different grades of sand. I mean from tiny particles to um, some small stones. And that's ideal because when you water this, you want the water to run right right in this stuff and out the other end. So basically, <coughs> now I know people worry about the holes in the side. Once this sand gets wet and it packs in, it's not going to come out those holes. At least not very much of it will. Now if the sand were bone dry, it would filter out of there just like sand does in an hourglass. But when you're rooting cuttings, you never want the, that sand dry. So just put it in there like that. It's good to go. What I do is just take a broad knife like this and just make a slice in the sand so that it's easy to stick your cuttings in there because some cuttings like some tiny uh, spirea or potentil are very, uh, very flexible and hard to get in. Now, I showed you earlier, that's all I do to strip the leaves off of that cutting. 
and then I take all my cuttings I strip a bunch at one time and I take all the cuttings and I line up the butt ends so they're just about even doesn't have to be perfect and then we use a rooting compound rooting compounds help they're not they're not a magic potion that instantly give you roots so if you don't have any rooting compound it's going to mean the difference between you making some cuttings today and not don't worry about it a lot of things will root without it but the rooting compound helps it increases your chances of success there are liquid rooting compounds that you mix with water there are liquids that are ready to use you just dip your cuttings in them there are powders that you wet the cutting and you roll them in the powder there are gels like a, a, a plant cloning gel or you know and it's it's kind of a stick they all work one is not better than the other so it don't get all caught up in that whatever you get it, it's going to work any kind of a plant rooting compound you don't want it's got to be a rooting compound you don't want something that's full of fertilizer you're not trying to make the plants grow you're just trying to make them root so in other words you got them all pushed together in a bundle you're going to mix your rooting compound in a container like this a plastic cup of any kind and then you're going to be about a five or six second dip it's not that critical just make sure it's at least five or six seconds if you're in there 10 or 20 seconds it's not going to hurt anything and then just take the cuttings and stick them in the container like this I put mine in about an inch apart no the roots once they get rooted they, they they don't really get tangled up because when you take them out of here the sand is going to be loose and a little bit drier and it's going to drop right off let's see I got one two three four five six seven eight there's nine right there so you could easily put 50 or 60 cuttings in this little tiny container once they're in there I'm going to take something as simple as a pencil to use as a prop because we're going to make a tent and I'll put these in the corners and all this is going to do is just keep the uh, keep the plastic up off of the the cutting a little bit if it touches the cutting it's not going to hurt anything now well now that I've got those in there I'm going to water those in real good because I want that all that sand washed around the roots I don't want air pockets around the stems of those cuttings so I'm going to take the hose and I'm going to just really drench this so that all the sand washes down in and then I'm going to slide the whole thing in a white trash bag don't use clear because clear is going to heat up too much so you're going to slide the whole thing whoops inside of the white trash bag which is easier said than done once I have the whole thing in there actually I'm gonna pick it up to do this and I can reach in there and adjust those pencils that I stuck in and make sure that I haven't knocked them over basically that's it I'm gonna take this end of the bag now I'm also gonna spray some more water in there because I want plenty of humidity so then I'm gonna take the hose and I'm gonna spray some water in here so that there's plenty of water in the bag and then I'm gonna take these ties pull them up tight and then I'm gonna tie that bag shut I'm gonna take this whole container bag and all and I'm gonna put it in a shady area because I don't want the Sun beating on this and that's it and I'm going to leave them alone. Now when you come back tomorrow, you're going to see some humidity inside of the bag, some moisture, condensation. That's good. Now, yeah, there are things that can go wrong. You can get, it's not going to hurt to come back after every week or so and open this up and just let some air in there for a few hours and then close it back up. Um, always make sure that when you close it back up there's plenty of moisture in there if there's not just go ahead and wet them again real good you can open that all the way up but basically this is very very simple and a lot of plants are going to root like this this is something that you can start doing in June July August September you could even do some in October but it's going to be a slow process but you can do them in October or November or December and just stick them outside in the woods don't worry about them they may not root in the fall but there's a good chance that they're gonna root in the spring 
So again, you know, once once fall gets here, you're not dealing with a softwood cutting like I was here today. The cuttings are going to get harder, and hardwood takes a lot longer to root, but it will still root. So this can you can do this with purple sand cherry flowering dogwood shrubs like red twig or yellow twig dogwood, rose of Sharon, and I got a whole list of stuff on my website. It tells you how to do it. If you just go to the website and search uh, and look for that homemade plant propagation system, there's all kinds of links on there to tell you how to do softwood cuttings, hardwood cuttings, softwoods of evergreens, and you know there's a ton of information. But this is a very simple system. Anybody can do it at home. You don't need anything special. This tub was about two dollars. The sand was two or three dollars. Um, Forty-seven cents for a package of pencils, and if you have cuttings, those are free. So again, it's a very easy way. It's an improvised way of doing the homemade plant propagation system where you got to paint a fish tank and do all that. This is a shortcut, but it works very, very well. Give it a try. I think you have a lot of fun with it.